You are watching Sammy, the Interviewing Toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with Angela Jackson Brown. Hi, Angela. How are you? I'm great, Sammy. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm so excited to be talking to you. I love talking to Indiana authors. And I have to say, I'm a little intimidated because I normally talk to children's authors. But I feel like children's authors and authors that write for grown-ups, they're the same, right? Absolutely, Sammy. And don't be intimidated because all it is is words on page, on the page. So it's just bigger words sometimes. But I bet you know how to read, don't you? Oh, of course. Literacy is so important. <laughs> so important. So, Angela, tell us about yourself and your connection to Indiana. Well, Sammy, I started out in Alabama. That's where I was born and raised. Uh, but then as the years went by, I moved to different locations. So I moved from Alabama to Kentucky, where I met my husband. And then he got a job in Indiana 13 years ago, and we've been here ever since. So I think officially, I'm a Hoosier now. Oh, I love it when people say that they're Hoosiers. I'm totally a Hoosier. I'm so glad to hear that you feel like you're a Hoosier. <laughs> So, Angela, can you tell us a little bit about your work? I have one of your books here, Drinking from a Bitter Cup, which sort of looks sad. Is it a sad story? You know, it has sad aspects to it. There, there's a little girl in the book, and her mother passes away. And she goes to Alabama, a state she's never been to before. Uh, she's 10 years old at the time, and she goes to live with her father, who she never met. But he was such a good daddy to her. Um, but other things happened that kind of, you know, made her have more sadness. But the good thing is, is by the time you get to the end of the book, you can tell that Sylvia is going to be okay. That's great. That's great. And what about your other work? I know, are you working on a novel now? You have one coming out soon? I do. I have a book that's coming out next year, uh, April uh, 13th, and it's called When Stars Rain Down, and it's going to be published by Thomas Nelson, an imprint of HarperCollins, and I'm so excited about that book because it's part of um, my thesis, which was a long, long paper I had to write to graduate from graduate school, and this story started as a part of that thesis. And it's also about a young person. So she's 17 years old, about to turn 18. And she has a very rough summer uh, where a lot of bad people do some bad things, but her family pulls her through. So that's really what that book is about. It's not so much that bad things can't happen. It's what do we do when they happen? And do we have a support system? And Sylvia has a really strong support system in her family. Oh, that's so great. And tell us about the book you're working on now. Oh my goodness, Sammy, I'm so busy. I'm working on another novel. It's very different from anything I've ever written before. It's called, right now, it's called uh, political choices. The publisher might decide to change the title, but that's the working title, and it's a political drama. Do you know anything about World War II? Oh, a little bit, sure. Yeah, well, that's when the book is set in that time frame, and so you get to see the senator who uh, is running for, um, who's thinking about running for pre the presidency, but he falls in love with someone who at the time He's not allowed to love because society says it's wrong and she's a black woman. But what you find out in the book is that love is love and you can't, you can't change who you love. And so those two have to figure out what to do um, in terms of dealing with society and still following the path that they're supposed to be on. Oh my gosh, all your work sounds so great. And let's just say it again, love is love. I love that. I think that's fantastic. So Angela, where are you in your creative journey and where do you hope to be someday? Do you feel like you're in the beginning? Are you in the middle? What do you feel like? Well, Sammy, that's a difficult question because I'd like to believe I'm going to be here another 50 years, but who knows? So I'm not real sure. I think I am still learning a lot. And I think as a writer, or really as any 
anyone, we should always be in a, in a process of learning more things. So I think I'm maybe somewhere comfortably in the middle, but I think, you know, who knows, maybe I'm, maybe I'm closer to the other side, but either way, I'm having a wonderful time uh, discovering new stories to tell. Oh, I love that. You know, Angela, it's so fascinating to me. I, I talk to authors a lot and so many of them bring up this idea of being a lifelong learner and keeping our minds flexible, you know? Absolutely, because I write historical fiction. So I have to do a lot of research about the past. And every single day I learn something brand new, something that I didn't know the day before, which is exciting to me, which is one reason why I like to write about the past, because it gives me an excuse to read history. Oh, I love that. So, Angela, you know, we're actually living through history right now. I mean, I suppose you can say that we're always living through history, but there's an awful lot going on right now, including, you know, the health crisis, and we have a lot happening in the news right now with um, uh, civic justice and things like that. How are you coping with everything going on right now? Well, the writing helps helps because I have to stay focused and I have to stick with my deadline. So that's one thing. And the other thing is I try to engage as much as I can. Now that's hard because, you know, we all are socially distancing from each other and we can't be in the same space. Like I would love to be there in the room with you, but because we want to be safe, you know, you have to be there and I have to be here, but I still try to you know, I still try to have conversations with people. I still try to, you know, write literary work that can speak about the times that we're living in. And I try to support as many organizations that I can monetarily and with my time. Like I've been voting, I've been working with voter registration, which has been very nice because I get to talk to people and encourage them to, to go out and vote in November. Oh, I love that. That's so great. Um, so my last question, we like to do a little show and tell with authors. Do you have something there that you'd like to share with our viewers? I do, Sammy. I do. I'm going to see if I can show you. I can see. The, yeah. Can you guess what that is, Sammy? Well, is it is it a walking cane? Yes, it's a very special walking cane. It used to be my grandfather, Mr. Lee. Everyone called him Mr. Lee. So it used to be my grandfather, Mr. Lee's walking cane. And then it became, after he passed away, it became my daddy's walking cane. And then after my daddy passed away, it became my walking cane because I have some health issues that sometimes make it difficult for me to walk. But the other thing that this walking cane has become for me, Sammy, is a touchstone, which means when I'm riding and I get lost or if I get afraid that I'm not going to figure things out, I'll reach over and I'll touch this walking cane. And it's like I can feel the ancestors in the walking cane telling me, you're going to be okay. You can oh, I love that. And Angela, I noticed that on your background, you have a lot of, of pictures. Are those some of your family and your ancestors just right there behind you? It absolutely is. And, and my husband's ancestors. I don't know if you can see the two ladies right behind me, the lady, the lady, um, the younger looking lady is my mutt was a picture of my mother-in-law. And then the lady on the other side of hers, that's my husband's grandmother. And then I have pictures of my children and nieces and nephews and my mother and my sister. So it's, uh, it's another way that I like to, to keep people close. Oh, I just love that. I love that. It And your your walking stick is so, um, it's so nice that it's so tangible, you know, and feeling like your hand is resting right on that piece that, you know, your father touched and your grandfather. That's really very special. I love thank that. You. Thank you. Thank so you so much for sharing and thank you so much for your time today. Um, I can't wait to read more of your work and so exciting that you've got you know, more books coming out. Congratulations, and hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. I would love that, Sammy. You take care. You too. This is your favorite Hoosier Toucan, encouraging you to read local. So long, everyone.